One last uh, question about free will um, as a defense of God and, and as part of theodicy. You know, the argument is, is that God is willing to uh, give the world suffering and evil because free will is so valuable and so good that it's worth the cost. Um, and moreover, the idea that uh, uh, evil in general is derived from bad choices that human beings make uh, that they could have made otherwise. Because that's what free will is. That that's that's what makes the that's what gives the argument teeth is the notion that we instinctively um, we instinctively kind of agree that that since human beings can choose between good and evil, this is a really valuable thing. Uh, this ability to choose is something that's worthwhile. In fact, it's so worthwhile that it might even be worth the cost that uh, human beings might and in fact have and and continue to choose really bad things. Well, one of the problems with this. Uh, view is that free will probably isn't as free as we might like to think that it is. Um, I'm not a determinist. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I do believe in an open future. I think that we do have free will. I think that we can make choices. But I think that the range of choices that we can make, um, the neurosciences seem to indicate that they're actually much narrower than we might have thought. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting studies uh, that show, or at least purport to show, that what we think of as free will may not be nearly as free as we, you know, would have hoped. So, for example, um, when we look at uh, addiction studies, it seems to be the case that people who are addicted to opiates, for example, when they're given, you know, in one hand uh, an opiate and in the other hand a cheeseburger, they really don't have a choice. I mean, if we look at brain scans, it seems that they've already decided what they're going to, or they're 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 making the 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 preparations and movements nearly to choose the opiate um, over and against the other quote unquote option. And it could be the case that uh, that addiction, that sin, um, is in fact so corrupting that it actually robs us of the ability to really make a choice between two options or three options or four. Um, we do know that neural pathways um, harden over time, so that uh, once you make a choice over and over, um, habits are something that are nearly encoded. Uh, it's not uh, once once you have a habit developed, it's very very difficult to break because your brain is actually uh, predisposed and very very in favor of following an old pathway as opposed to developing a new one. If that's the case, then it seems like uh, free will, like a classical notion of free, where, free will, in which you uh, are given two options, and it's simply um, uh, using you, you're simply using your reason to determine which is best, and then choosing it. Now that's just not a realistic, um, it's not a realistic description of how human beings actually function. And this, of course, we we knew that we knew this before we had neuroscience. Um, the problem of uh, acrasia, um is the the age-old problem of you know why do human beings choose something when they know that it's against their best interests? Classic example is smoking. Every person knows uh, that smoking kills. We've got tons and tons of studies that suggest that uh, lung cancer is strongly correlated to um, to smoking. And yet, a person who's been smoking for 15 years has an incredibly difficult time refusing cigarettes. And it's not as though their reason isn't telling them that they ought to choose something different. It's that the pull, or the, um, it's it's that they've got neural neural pathways. They've got um, a brain chemistry, and a body chemistry that is predisposed to strongly desire um, that which is ultimately not good for them. Um, does this completely undermine uh, the free will defense of of God's of God's existence um, as a theodicy? Probably not, but I think it strongly qualifies it. I think um, at the end of the day, you have to build this in to your theodicy. You have to say, not only does God allow free will, God also has it set up such that free will is um, it's strongly susceptible to, uh, to habit forming. Um, it's strongly susceptible to being overcome over time with addictions. Uh, free will, um, it's, yeah, it's just not as free as we thought it was. And so you have to say, and even that, even that still... Um, it's worth it. It's all the all the bad stuff that comes out of, of, of poor choices are worth it if the first time you choose um, you're genuinely free, whatever that might mean. But you, you can see the pull of the, the the force of the objection. It seems like well, if God really wanted to make people 
free, then he could have made them in a way that they were um, sort of like uh, you know rational machines, right? Where every time you had to make a choice, you were able to list out kind of on one side all the good things and on the other side all of the bad things and simply make a, uh, a calculus, um, a hedonic calculus to decide which is best for you over time and then every single time you've made that calculus it would come out and it would be concrete and you'd say I choose this and yet that's not our experience. So is there free will? I think there probably is. Um, I'm, I'm pretty committed to, to the a notion of free will but I'm also not naive, and I and I don't think that um, that what we think of as free will is as free as it, as, as we'd like, and I don't think that um, and and I wonder I wonder if if when you add that in if that somehow damages or makes the free will defense of God a little less compelling.